I call the member for a hunter. Well, that was lucky, Mr. Uh, Speaker. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, after I uh, mistakenly said, Madam, I thought you might have not given me the call. But thank you very much. I rise. <laughs> I rise to. Um, I rise to support the, uh, this uh, particular bill, the Greyhound Racing Bill 2017. Mr. Speaker, Greyhound Racing does make a significant contribution to small businesses and our regional communities, as you would know as a, a rural and regional member yourself. It's, uh, it's, it's fair to say uh, that uh, the, there, is a, there has been a lot of angst um, throughout the, uh, the greyhound industry, not just the greyhound industry directly, but also indirectly uh, with the suppliers, uh, different business people, farmers, as has been mentioned before, farmers and so forth, who saw this, and I mentioned this in my speech back uh, on the 11th of August 2016, that uh, farmers and uh, other groups were worried that this would be a precedent uh, set for the future. However, we are now correcting uh, that particular situation, <coughs> and the government uh, has, has uh, listened and learned, uh, and in particular, may I acknowledge the members of the Greyhound industry from the Greyhound Alliance in the gallery up here, who have played a very professional and outstanding role in making sure that they have consistently spoken to government and individual government members, putting their case forward as to why the greyhound industry should and will have a good long-term future. It has been mentioned uh, from the Greens, for example, that effectively the Greens don't have faith in the people within the industry to be able to make the necessary changes for the long-term benefits of not only the industry itself, but also the welfare of the people and the animals within the dogs within the industry. Well, the government does have faith in the people, and the fundamental flaw that was in their in the racing industry, in the greyhound racing industry previously, will be addressed by this bill. I.e., the integrity commission, the, the the oversight and regulatory role will be separated from the functions of the commercial role of the greyhound industry. It should always have been set up like that. It should always have had a separation, if you like, of those two particular roles. It's very difficult, and there are many, many, many uh, instances of where a, an industry can't be its own regulator. And this particular legislation now addresses this particular uh, problem. To that end, the Integrity Commission is being supported by $11 million from the government for its first five years to be able to set itself up, set the policies and put the policies and the procedures in place and the oversight measures in place to ensure that the animal welfare aspects and indeed the individual people welfare aspects equally as important, if not, well, equally as important, um, are set in train to be able to be looked after very well from a regulatory point of view. In addition to that, the industry will have a commercial arm which will drive the viability, the, the short, medium and long term viability in particular of the greyhound industry and the participants in that industry. Mr Speaker, there is $30 million set aside of the $41 million in this package. There is $30 million set aside for the greyhound industry, which is essentially for track improvements and facility improvements based on animal welfare issues. So, for example, if you have particular tracks that have a bad camber or need upgrading for the rails or whatever the case may be where the dogs may race, um, then if, we can, if that can be identified by the industry that it needs to be improved for the animal welfare uh, uh, benefit, and of course the, the participants within the industry, then they then will apply to be able to get some funds from that $30 million to be able to upgrade those tracks. Now, I think that's a very important role that the government can play. I mean, let's not forget that the government is the facilitator of this to be able to allow 
the longevity and um, the long-term viability of the greyhound industry. It is up to the industry and members of it, like these members up here in the gallery, to ensure that they get it right. The, the Commercial Board and the Integrity Commission need to make sure that they get every aspect right. The policies need to be right for animal welfare, but the commercial realities also need to be right, and we need to make sure that the board is made up of appropriately qualified people and their focus is on nothing but the long-term viability of this particular industry. Again, in my speech back in, uh, on the 11th of August 2016, I mentioned a fellow that I know, or unfortunately knew because he passed away, Maury Gray. Maury Gray spent 50 years working voluntarily in the greyhound industry. He was the president of the Musselbrook Greyhound Club, an absolutely passionate person about greyhounds, and I said at the time he would be turning in his grave about what the discussion was, which I also indicated that I wasn't happy about, but the discussion was back on the 11th of August 2016. Well now, Maury can look down with some degree of comfort, I'm sure, knowing that every cloud has a silver lining. Maury was the sort of person that would take a pragmatic approach and I'm sure, like the members of the Alliance up here in the gallery, that they needed, I suppose in some ways, needed that time to focus on what the industry needed for its long-term benefits and the benefits of the participants in it. Maury would have played, I've got no doubt, a very strong role in ensuring that the greyhound industry had a long-term viable future. And I'm sure he'd be a lot happier now that we are here in the House discussing this particular issue and reconstituting the greyhound industry or greyhound racing New South Wales with the appropriate measures, measures to ensure that Murray's passion and the passion of many, many others in my electorate and right across New South Wales is able to be exercised because a lot of people love their dogs. I also mentioned in my speech in August last year a great mate of mine, Steve Walland, who takes photos at the finishing line at a number of uh, tracks. I've known him for about 35 years, a great man of high integrity and a fellow who would now, who I said at the time, had about a business plan of about 10 years and he wasn't going to be able to fulfil those goals. Now he can. He will be able to fulfil those goals. I have a, within my electorate, Cancool Meats, who were going to go broke. Now they will stay open. Not only will they stay open, but they will probably thrive and flourish for the long term, securing nine to eleven jobs in the small town of Willow Tree, Corindai, small towns of Willow Tree, Corindai and Murrurundi. These are very, very important measures. There are lots of small businesses who are involved within the greyhound industry. There are lots of people, so many people, who are absolutely passionate about their dogs, the dogs' welfare, and ensuring that they can follow through on their passion for racing. There is nothing wrong with it whatsoever. The Greens are totally off the mark if they think that this is somehow a capitulation to uh, integrity within the industry. This is not. This is an improvement to the industry. This is an improvement to ensure that the long-term viability of the industry is assured by making sure that the Integrity Commission is separated from the commercial functions of the industry with the right people on those particular boards, there is absolutely no doubt whatsoever that greyhound industry will continue to thrive into the long term. Mr Speaker, about 20 years ago I used to go to the Musselbrook track uh, on a Saturday night and it would be nothing to see two or three hundred people there. Mr Speaker, I see no reason why that can't come back and Musselbrook track can thrive 
once again. I commend this bill to the House. Question.